story time with Adam and Don. Hello everybody and thank you for joining us again here at the Canyon City Public Library for another virtual story time. To get us started, we'd like to sing our welcome song, sung to the tune of Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, and it goes a little something like, Welcome, welcome everyone, now you're here, let's have some fun. First we'll clap our hands just so, then we'll bend and touch our toes. Welcome, welcome everyone, now you're here, let's have some fun. Good job everyone, hopefully parents, you guys are still singing with your child at home. There's your voice is one that they come to know, and comforting and loving and leads into building strong relationships with lo the love of reading. Lead us into our first book for today. The Pout Pout Fish Goes to School. I know school will be starting shortly here. The Pout Pout Fish Goes to School. Written by Deborah Deason. Pictures by Dan Hannah. A long time ago, when Mr. Fish was very small, he headed off to school for the first time of all. With a smooch from his parents and excited for the day, Mr. Fish rushed in, then he lost his way. The big fish around him knew exactly where to go, finding lockers, finding classes, and fast, smart flow. Mr. Fish left behind, with his grin sinking thin, finally stopped at a doorway, and shyly looked in. The class was doing writing, and most everybody knew it. So he tried to print his name, but he just couldn't do it. So he flubbed, flubbed, frowned, making blub, blub bubbles. Then he plopped down his pencil, and he counted off his troubles. Trouble one, I'm not smart. Trouble two, I'll never get it. Trouble three, I don't belong. So four, I should forget it. He floated with a frown down the log corridor. Then he sneaked a peek through another room's door. The class was drawing shapes and most everybody knew it. So he tried to make a rhombus, but he just couldn't do it. So he flub flub frowned, making blub blub bubbles. Then he plopped down his pencil and he counted off his troubles. Trouble one, I'm not smart. Trouble two, I'll never get it. Trouble three, I don't belong. So four, I should forget it. He drifted down the hallway with a doubled doubt face till he spied another doorway. Maybe this was his place. The class was doing math and most everybody knew it. So he tried long division, but he just couldn't do it. So he flub flub frowned, making blub blub bubbles. Then he plopped down his pencil and he counted off his troubles. Trouble one, I'm not smart. Trouble two, I'll never get it. Trouble three, I don't belong. So four, forget it. He rushed towards the exit. That's enough, I say. School is way too tough and I'm not going to stay. Then a soft, kind voice said, don't you fret. You don't have to know things you haven't learned yet. Your classroom awaits. I'm your teacher, Miss Hewitt. I'm here to help you learn, and I know that you can do it. You're a fish who is smart. With, pra with practice, you'll get it. Young fish, you belong. Don't you forget it. The student and the teacher swam a splish, splash swish to the door with a sign marked brand new fish. Miss Hewitt said, good morning. I'm excited you're all here. Together we'll have a spectacular year. Fact one, you're smart. Fact two, you can get it. Fact three, you belong. So four, don't forget it. The class got to work and Miss Hewitt helped them through it. They listened, they tried, and everyone can do it. Miss Fish gave a grin. Goodbye, blub bubbles. No more doubt. Doubt worry, no more flub flub troubles. He swam with his class, Miss Hewitt by his side, as the students and their teachers said, with confidence and pride. Fact one, we are smart. Fact two, we can get it. Fact three, we belong. And four, we won't forget it. 
the end. With practice, we can get in it, can't we? A nice little counting book there. One, two, three, and four. Things that he was working on, his problems. Folks, don't forget the Colorado census is still going on till October. So please, if you haven't had a chance, go out there and fill out your census. Who here knows the wheels on the bus? This is a fun one to sing to. So, let's see what that is. The wheels on the bus go round and round, round and round, round and round. The wheels on the bus go round and round all day long. The wipers on the bus go swish, 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 swish. The wipers on the bus go swish, swish, swish all day long. The horn on the bus. Goes beep 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 the horn on the bus goes beep 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 all day long the driver on the bus says tickets tickets please tickets tickets please tickets tickets please the driver on the bus says tickets tickets please all day long <laughs> The parents on the bus go chat, 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 chat. The parents on the bus go chat, chat, chat all day long. The babies on the bus go wah, 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 wah. The babies on the bus go wah, wah, wah all day long. The people on the bus go shh, 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 shh. The people on the bus go shh, 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 all day long. Where'd they go? Looks like a party. There's clowns, there's cake, balloons, fun stuff. The secret science project that almost ate the school. The secret science project that almost ate the school. By Judy Sierra, pictures by Stephen Gamble. Hmm. I was grumpy. I was grouchy. I was slouching in my chair. I was thinking grim and gloomy thoughts about the science fair. Miranda bragged her <clears throat> rocket ship could travel to the moon. Alexander thought his hamster had to sing a tune. The ants on Mary's ant farm were growing corn and peas, and Kevin Fink was on the brink of curing a disease. Miss Frigget looked me in the eyes. I wish that I could hide. What will your project be? She asked. It's a secret, I replied. The secret was I didn't really have a project yet. I need an experiment that no one would forget. So I stayed up late and found a great one on the internet. A science project fully guaranteed to win first prize. A substance so amazing judges won't believe their eyes. A mutant yeast with just a piece of dragon DNA. Professor Swami's super slime. Order yours today. I sent the money instantly. Then early Friday morning, a box appeared. It looks so weird with a big with big green letters warning. Your super slime is sensitive, so handle it with care. Keep it safe inside this box until the science fair. Then feed it sugar till it swells a thousand times its mass. Stand back as it erupts into a harmless cloud of gas. I popped a little I popped the lid and gave a little slime a teeny little poke. It started getting bigger. It growled and blew off smoke. It catapulted from the box and splattered on the floor. Preci precisely as Sir scratch -a -Lot stepped through the kitty door. And propped his paws in the mutant muck. He brutally hissed and spat. Yikes! The secret science project ate my kitty cat.
So that's your stupid project, asked my sister Kate. Stop, I said. You'll hurt its feeling, oops. It was too late. The slime began to spin around, it rose into the air, and when it roared and hit the floor, my sister wasn't there. <clears throat> Just then I heard my father's voice, what's going on in there? Something in that bedroom smells like moldy underwear. My science project sensitive, I warned, don't make it mad. There wasn't time to stop the crime. The slime ingested dad. The science project looked at me. I thought it was, <clears throat> I saw it drool. I tried to run away, but yikes, it followed me to school. Miss Fidget shouted, ew, what's that big disgusting creature? The slime stopped short and gave a snort and ate my third grade teacher. It grew larger by the minute as it swallowed Alexander and incorporated Kevin Fink, Mary, and Miranda. <clears throat> and the slime was busy slipping up the last of Mary's ants. I remembered the instructions in the pocket of my pants. Sugar! I commanded, feed that hungry slime some sweets. The kids reached into their backpacks. Soon the air was full, filled with treats. As donuts flew and cookies too and candy bars and gum. The bloated blob was quick to gobble every single crumb. I should have can of soda pop and sprayed the growling slime, the growing slime, till I could tell that it had swelled to at least a thousand times. Now everybody hid. I screamed. Kaflaz, kaflam, kaflu. It vanished into a stupefying burst of CO2. When the dust had cleared, my dad was up in the tree. My teacher dangled from the roof. We all were on TV. Sir scratch a lot, I called and called. What happened to my cat? He's on your head, my sister said, pretending he's a hack. My project didn't win first prize, and that was fair, I guess. Miss Fidget kept me after school to clean up all the mess. And underneath the cookie bits and sugary debris, I saw a goopy glob of smile, a slime, and yikes, it winked at me. The end. The end. Another fun back to school book is Monsters Love School. Monsters Love School, written and illustrated by Mike Austin and read with permission by Harper Publishers. Brave little monsters love big adventures. Diving and swinging and splashing and singing all summer long. But summer has come to an end. Now it's time to get ready for the biggest adventure of all. Monster School! Woohoo! Awesome! Oh yeah! And then this guy's like, school? Gulp! We need a backpack filled with special supplies for this big adventure. Check the list, says Greenie. Tape? Check. Paper? Check. Ruler? Check. Lunchbox? Check. Crayons? Check. What if I get hungry? When do we eat? asked Blue. We eat at lunchtime in the cafeteria, says Little Gray. Let's go, buddy. Good morning, says Miss Wiggles. What if no one likes me, worries Blue. You're going to make lots of new friends, says Little Gray. Wiggle, wiggle. Miss Wiggles sings. Wiggle, wiggle, cross the street, off to school, now move those feet. What's school for anyways, asks Blue. I already know my ABGs and 413s and XYDs. Silly monster, we'll show you, says Little Gray. Oh, there's the principal. Principal Blinky says, school is for learning ABCs and 123s and XYZs. School is for painting and folding and pasting, says Miss Scribble, the art teacher. I made a fancy hat fit for a queen. I love art class, says Pinky. I made a superhero mask, grr, says Blue. I made a mustache, says Little Gray. 
I made a mistake. Please help, says Goo. <laughs> That's okay. Everybody makes mistakes. I'll help you fix it, says Miss Scribble. School is for making new friends, says Pinky. I love your fancy hat. Nice job, your majesty. Why, thank you. Your superhero mask is quite splendid. I love recess. School is for reading and writing and spelling, says Miss Spell. Can you spell monster? M-U-N-Z-D-E-R? Mm -mm. mm -mm. Let's try it. M-O-N-S-T-E-R. How about H-U-N-G-R-Y? When do we eat? Hungry. School is for trying new things, says Chef Octai. Like my delicious, nutritious, world famous school gruel. Yummy, yummy, monsters drool for school gruel. We've got syrup and ketchup together. Hmm. Miss Hiss says school is for learning your monster history. Mrs. Hiss's history class is awesome. Our founding monsters. Now it's time for Explorer Book Club, says Mr. Reed, the librarian. And let's hear it for Singing Club, shouts Miss Warble. Give it up for our newest group, the High Notes. So beautiful, sniffles Pinky. I wonder what they were singing. Ding, ding, ding. It's the end of the school day. Time to go home. Hi, Blue, says Little Gray. How was your first day of school? I was kind of scared, but now I'm not. I'm learning my ABCs and 123s and XYZs. I made a cool new superhero mask in art class. I met lots of new friends. I'm learning to read and write and spell. I ate school gruel, and tomorrow I'm bringing lunch. I'm learning my monster history. Book club at the library is awesome. I sang funny songs. I had fun. And you know what else? I love monster school. <laughs> See, they had fun. Monsters love school. Hopefully everybody's still practicing good hygiene there. One of our favorite songs that we've been practicing, the hand washing song, sung to the tune of Frere Jacques, and it goes a little something like, and tops and bottoms, tops and bottoms, in between, in between. Scrub them all together, scrub them all together, nice and clean, nice and clean. Tops and bottoms, tops and bottoms, in between, in between. Rub them all together, rub them all together, nice and clean, nice and clean. Good job, guys. <laughs>